So how do we create our digital reality? Let's look at one of the most successful digital companies, uh, one of the most valuable companies in the history of humankind, Amazon. So Amazon uh, has several things uh, it deals with. It deals with, it has consumers, clients, it has goods that it sells, uh, it has shopping habits, it has a logistical supply chain and delivery chain. And basically what Amazon does, it brings all of these things together. So these are information processes here. Um, so traditionally, there are different databases and it connects them into one thing. That is what retailing is. And then it creates actually a digital representation of each one of them. So a digital twin, you might say. So Amazon has a digital copy of you, like a little digital voodoo doll that it can experiment with and train its recommender algorithms with and see what they like of, of your shopping habits. It has a digital representation of that. It has a digital twin of all the products that it's you know, shipping through its platform and how they are being shipped. If they're shipped by FedEx or by Amazon Prime, that's a different question. And then all of these digital representations of reality are then put together. And you can think about it really creates um, a digital platform. That's why we also talk about the platform economy. And then once you have all this information up there on this platform, you can use this empirical evidence to do your machine learning. And you do theoretical simulations on it. And we will have to talk much more about that, how that works, both the machine learning, the artificial intelligence, and the theoretical simulations. And then you can optimize it. You can optimize, well, these processes that are involved there, the digital copies of it, actually, the digital twin of the retail sector that it has in order then to optimize what's going on in the real world. So, so that's how that works. And okay, this is an example from the secondary sector of the economy, goods. It also works the same for services. Let's look at the tertiary sector. Uh, let's look at Spotify. Spotify basically has a digital representation of the music sector. Again, it has a digital twin of the listeners, the, the consumers of the music habits. And well, here it's royalties and different music genres and so forth. Now, Spotify does not necessarily own the music, same as Amazon does not necessarily own the products that it buys and sells, that it trades. The music in this case is owned by, for example, by other companies, by much older companies, for example, by Sony Music. Sony Music owns what is maybe the most lucrative song in the history, I don't know, <laughs> happy birthday to you. So anytime happy birthday to you is playing somewhere, you know, it makes cha-ching, not in Spotify's pocket, it makes cha-ching first of all in Sony Music's pocket because Sony Music owns the song. Same as Amazon, um, other companies might own the products that are sold on Amazon. And while it's very lucrative to own something still, be it a song or be it a product, and Sony Music made $8 billion in that year, you know, Spotify's made $12 billion. So this is a new generation of companies. So Sony Music is from the 1920s and Spotify is from the, 20, from the 2010s, uh, that basically they don't necessarily own the goods and services themselves. They just, they live up here. So Spotify just lives up here. Uh, it's a company that owns a digital copy of music tastes and of characteristics of music. So that's now in the, in the, in the tertiary service sector. So we did now goods, we did services. Let's go to the to raw materials, to the, to the primary sector, because there are some companies that are actually much older than that. The companies that go back all the way to the Stone Age. Uh, one of these kind of organizations or companies are, are mining companies. And I actually had the pleasures in the, in the recent years to, uh, I was invited as, as the chief digital strategist for some digital transformation projects in the mining sector. And I never thought I would want to learn a lot uh, so much about it, but I learned a lot. And it's really fascinating, guys, because these companies, we have them around, we humankind, have them around since the Stone Age. And these companies, they went through all the digital innovation cycles, uh, the, the uh, industrial age as well, and now they're entering the information and the knowledge age. So, and that's accumulative. You can really see how innovation works then. Look, it still creates value to own a rock that's in the mountains. Same as it still has value to own a song or a consumer product. 
So that has still value. It also creates value to extract this rock efficiently, energetically efficiently. So for example, to transform energy in the industry and all this industrial revolution that was going on in the last 200, 300 years, where we created these big uh, industrial muscles, uh, trucks and cranes and crunchers and you know make these big holes in the earth to satisfy our unsatisfiable consumer demands on like getting these raw material out. Now what this one is about, this paradigm is about, uh, it adds additional value on top to optimize information and to create knowledge. So it still creates value to have own a rock. It still creates value to convert that rock efficiently with a lot of en energy efficiency into raw material. And now additionally, we're creating the additional value of making this optimally. And that has to do with looking at the information and the data of what's going on and communicating that efficiently, and then to optimize these processes, optimize the knowledge. So if you look at a mining company here, like you look at the hole that we make into the ground to satisfy our, our consumer demands, there are a lot of processes going on here. A lot of algorithms are running and they have been running in analog sense, since the Stone Age. You, know, you have the rock, you make a hole, you take it out, you crunch it, you think, you try to get to the iron, the bronze age. You know, we have, to, we have been doing that for a long time, getting these raw materials out. And these processes go all the way from the rock into the ground until you ship it to the port. And now the idea is to digitalize and to algorithmify all these processes that are involved. And what we do is, we do it the same way as Amazon is doing it, as Spotify, as Uber are doing it. So there's nothing, nothing new here. We have different processes in the mine, in the production, in the cleaning, in the selling, and they have to be, first of all, connected. Traditionally, they are not. So when you, when you, work, when you go in these companies, a lot of these companies right now are in the process of connecting these different databases. And that's a digital challenge. It has to do with the digitization of the information and then the digital bringing it together into the the big, big data. That's why they call it big data. The data is together. And then once you have that, well, you make start to make digital twins, digital copies of your assets. These assets are very valuable. I mean, these trucks and crunchers, they cost millions, billions of dollars. So they have a copy of it. They have a copy of the geology as well. They have a copy of the workers there as well and of the logistic of all the conveyor belts. And then you create a digital copy of it, a, a reality of it on, on top, where you then can do your machine learning and you can do your digital simulations in order to help you to optimize, optimize these processes. And you can think about it, so what's going on down here in this challenge, once you, once you grow it, you first look at reality, you take the data and the communication, you have to optimize it. That's kind of like the first condition, the first wave of the digital revolution, data and communication, bring it all together. And we are mainly still stuck in that, in that stage, uh, to, to, to install the sensors, to bring the information together in order to make it workable. And then comes the upcoming wave of the digital revolution is the knowledge, the algorithms to optimize the knowledge uh, in this. And then here on top is basically where you have the intelligence. Well, you always had, you know, not the artificial intelligence, the business intelligence, basically. And many people then, they kind of like how they present it, they present it as this mission control center up here. Remote, it could even be a remote operation center. <laughs> that picture I actually took from, from NASA, from the, from the whatever, 60s, 70s, when they put the first missions to the moon. And, and that's not really what it looks like. It's not like a mission control center nowadays that happens. It's more like mission control algorithms that are running that. Now you can, you can automate a big part of that, of the mission control. Uh, you can algorithmify a big part of it. Uh, and actually, it could be a completely different company that lives up there than the company that lives down here. Now, for example, in the mining industry, that's usually not the case. Usually it's the same company that owns, let's say, the rocks, the mountains, that owns the production process and that owns the intelligence of it. Um, and many companies, companies that are in digital transformation that, that I work with are, you know, rushing in order to bring that together. So these are traditional companies, uh, you know, industrial production companies that now are rushing to kind of like 
digitalize and algorithmify the intelligence of it, the information part of it. But if you're not quick enough, then you're taking over by other companies. We already talked about these three companies and these companies, they basically, they live up here and not necessarily need to live down here. Uber does not own the taxis. Amazon does not own the products. Amazon now starts to produce products because it knows so much about the production process that it produces its own batteries, you know? But Spotify does not necessarily own the music. What they own is the digital representation of it, a digital twin of it that works up here. And here they do their machine learning, they study it, they do their simulations. We talk more about how that will work. And there's an entire array of companies that basically does that. Airbnb has more beds than the Hyatt and the Sheraton combined but it doesn't own the beds. It doesn't even own the bed sheets. Now there's still value in owning a bed. There's also value in washing sheets. Now the value produced by Airbnb is the knowledge of the hotel, of the hospitality industry in that sense. Same for Netflix. Oh man, here in California and Hollywood, <laughs> Hollywood had been laughing about that. Like who wants to kick Hol the all powerful Hollywood off the throne? And now they're all in line trying to get on <laughs> Netflix. Now Netflix basically started out here. It does not necessarily own the content, the movies, the series. Now Netflix started to produce content and series because it, it knows so much about what people want. It can produce series that really interest people. But not necessarily. Netflix basically, mainly, traditionally, has lived up here and takes the content from others and then just is running it. So, and there are many other examples of other companies that basically do that. So if you're not quick enough, the creative destruction, and that's a technical term, Schumpeter's creative destruction, we talk more about that at the end of the specialization in some other sessions when we talk about social evolution, the creative destruction will basically leave you behind. And it still creates value to have physical products and to do that, transform them energetically, efficiently in an industrial sense. But the aggregate value that's now put on top lives up here. It has to do with the information and knowledge embedded, implied in these processes. And these processes have always been there. And we do that in two steps. So basically, if you go from the bottom up, we first of all bring all the data, all the information together, all the communication, we communicate all the information, different databases together. We talk, we call that the digitization and later the digitalization of that process. And then once we have it up down, uh, once we algorithmized it, then we algorithmify these processes back down. And that's what we will talk about in the next one.